Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, I'm going to be constructing the overhead cabinets above the bed. On this side, I have a small cabinet. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to be constructing a much longer cabinet that runs from where the window starts all the way down to the end of the bed. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure this batten against the back wall here. And the batten is 45 by 40 mil. What I've done is I've pre-pilot holed and countersunk into the wood. And now I will use these self-tapping screws, which are 5.5 by 46 mil. They're roofing cladding self-tapping screws. So let's give that a go. This overhead cupboard will run, it will run from here to close enough to the door here. The reason I'm only starting it here, I want to leave a gap here so you can actually get in and use the two gang socket and also so you can actually look at your charge monitor. I think that's for the, the solar and that's for your inverter. So I want to leave this, I want to leave a gap here so you can get in and you can actually see these controls. Also, it gives it a nice break, I think, I hope. Anyway, we'll see how we get on. So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna secure this first baton and then take it from there. So let's give that a go. Now that I have this batten secured to the side of the van, the next thing to do is build a frame for the front of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a frame for the front and then secure that frame to this cross beam and this cross beam here. And then that will hold that frame in place to the front. Then I will secure it to the back beam with two by one. Let's give that a go and see how we get on. I now have the wood cut to size for the frame. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure it together using pocket screws and I will just show you how I'm going to do that. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have it similar to the way I did the kitchen unit and that is I'm going to have at the top and bottom I'm going to have the edge showing and then on the sides what I'll do is I'll have the full width of the 2 by one I'm going to have a rail on either end which is 16 inches high. So now what I've got to do is I've got to mark out for this and then cut out for the thickness of this two by one. Then what I'll do is I'll, I'll slot this in, secure it from the back with pockets, hole screws and some glue. Then I'll probably stick one in the middle, the center rail like that in the middle to divide the two doors. And I'm gonna have flip up doors like that. So let's get to work and let's get that finished. Now that I have the frame complete for the front of it, I just have to and secure it to the roof. But I have a bit of a problem because the light is kind of in the way of where I'd really like the frame to be positioned. I think what I'm gonna have to do is remove this light and then bring it out a bit further here in front of the frame. So just move it by a couple of inches. So 
So that's it secured to the roof. The next thing to do is cut the pieces of wood to connect the front frame along here to the back. So I'll do one here, one in the center, and then one on the outer edge here. So let's do that. I now have all the overhead cupboards complete and they're installed on either side of the van. I'll just talk you through exactly how I constructed the overhead cupboards. I built the overhead cupboards on the driver's side the exact same way that I built the ones on the passenger side. The first thing I did was to construct the outside frame and I did that using two end sections. So one on either end and then I used the two cross beams, one on the top and then one on the bottom. I notched out the two battens on either end. And then once I had that notched out and I had the frame glued, the next thing I did was I cut a two by two, I think it was, and I measured down from the roof, down the height. The next thing I did was I secured the frame to the roof of the van. I secured the front frame to the roof of the van using these roof cladding screws. 5.5 by 46 mil long screws and they're for their roof cladding fixture. What they are is this type of a self-tapping screw. I removed the washer and then I pilot hold into the cross beam of the roof. So you see where these screws are going? That's the cross beam where I have the, the 12 mil ply is uh, sicker flexed onto the cross beam. What I did was I pilot drilled a hole into that cross beam and countersunk and then took, took out the washer and then secured that to the cross, to the roof of the van there, there. And then what I did was because it was tipping down slightly here, I drilled in just a regular screw. So that's going, that's screwing into the cladding of the, the roof of the van. And I put another one just here. So that's all secured to the roof and it's gonna go nowhere. Once I had this secured to the roof of the van, the next thing I did was, the way I got the distance was, I just guessed it. So I just had, had a rough guess of the depth and then brought it out and use my eyes. Your eyes are the main thing when you're building a van. Just look at something and if you can, if you can level it up with your eyes, it's gonna be good. And um, so once I'd secured this to the roof of the van, then what happened was it started to pull out at an angle. So what I had to do was like level it up and straighten it up. Once I could see visually that it's straightened up, I got a piece of wood from the front section to the back. I then worked out how far the distance I'd have to come down to place this batten on the back of the van. So again, I did that just by looking at it and, and taking your time. And again, using these self-tapping screws, I secured the batten to the side of the van. I got the front frame here and I pushed it in and made sure that it was level. Then I measured from here to the batten on the side of the van and I cut these side rails. So I cut this one here. On, on that side and then I measured and I cut the center one. I then connected them using the pocket tool kit and first I secured them to the front part of the cupboard, the frame. Then when the two outside ones were secured, what I did was I pushed the frame in and that meant then that they were going touching off the back wall here and I secured them into the back wall. and. Then once they were secured into the back wall, I was able to cut the middle one. And then I cut the middle one. And then to finish it off, what I did was, I cut this final strip here. And I secured them with screws underneath. So that means now that I can stick the plywood up and secure it to the bottom of the cupboard. That's now the next step to do is to cover the the bottom in some plywood and then build out a shelf. I hope I've explained that well enough and you understand how I've done it. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments section below the video and I'll, I'll try and uh, describe better how I've done it. I also used glue when I was uh, securing the cross sections and building the frame. Let's cut the base and the side panels for the cupboards and what I'm gonna use for that is five mil marine ply. The reason I'm using the five mil marine ply is because I wanna keep the cupboards light and try and reduce the weight in the van, the overall weight. I now have the base of the cupboards cut to size and they're now installed. They're connected to the base of the cupboard using the clamps. The next thing I did was 
I've got these tongue and groove cladding, just like I did for the kitchen unit, I'm gonna use the tongue and groove cladding for the doors, for the overhead cupboards. And the reason I'm gonna use the tongue and groove cladding is because it's really lightweight, it's easy to work with, and it gives a nice finish. So I'm gonna paint it all white, with the black hinges and the handles. So I've cut four of them for each door. I just cut them to length last night, the four of them, and just, I'm just gonna attach one more and then cut that to height. For the end panel, what I did was I used a scrap of plywood and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same, the same scrap of ply, but I'm going to, down here, I'm going to use the template from the back door as the master template and what I'll do is I will place it on top of the cladding, so the roof cladding and this roof, this will then give me the shape, this will give me the template, I just have to cut an extra bit here. So that's the way the cladding is going to go. Once I have it cut out, it'll slot into place and it'll, it'll be scribed right into the wall. I'm going to cut that next for this end. And then I've also got one more to cut for the opposite uh, cupboard on the driver's side. So we've got two more gables to cut. I'm going to cut them and then we'll move on to the doors. So let's give that a go. Now the side panel is all scribed in place. I have it scribed to the side wall here and I have it scribed to the roof. I left it overhanging at the end. So the last thing to do is just to draw a line along the bottom and then cut that on the chop saw. It's just a straight line. And then that will be then the side panel complete. I now have all the end panels cut out for the cupboards. So the next step is to build the shelves. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to also use the tongue and groove cladding as the shelf. The supports that are gonna hold the shelf in place are now almost complete. How I did it was, I cut this front piece and I screwed that onto the front beam. And then what I did was I cut this piece at the back and I had to do a slight angle. And I secured that to the back wall with two screws. And then on top, I cut a length of two by one to run from the front to the back. The way I secured that was, I don't know if you can see it, pocket hole screw under on the back and a pocket hole screw on the front. The last thing to do before I make the actual shelf is to cut a piece of two by one and then run it across the front and run it across the back. The support for the shelf is now complete and I'll just give you a look and I'll talk you through how I did it. I used a pocket hole screw to screw it into the side part and then another pocket hole screw here and I screwed that into the, the, the side support. I'm gonna get some tongue and groove cladding and then have that as my shelf. That's how I'm gonna construct the shelf for the opposite cupboard. So let's crack on with that and see how we get on. I now have the tongue and groove cladding cut for the door. The next thing to do is to now brace these doors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two two by one battens on the back, one here and then one here. Let's do that and then let's fit the door in place. I now have nearly all the doors hanging. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you exactly how I've hung these doors in order for the doors to fit in flush with the front of the cupboard. What I have to do is I have to take a notch out of those two battens on the back of the door. There you can see the two notches taken out of the batten on the front. And then what that does is it allows these battens to recess into the front batten here that's supporting the shelf. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna place the door up against the front of the cupboard and then from behind, I'm gonna mark exactly where the batten comes in contact with this. Let's get to work and give that a go. Now that I have the batten secured back in place, 
I'm going to place this door up against the cupboard. Then with a pencil, I'm gonna mark the edges where I need to sand down so I get an even gap all the way around the door. Now that I have the door sanded and I'm happy with how it's fitting, I have an even gap all the way around the door. What I've done to get that gap is I've used these little packers on the bottom of the door. And what it is is just simply a piece of cardboard. So I've put one there and one there of the same thickness. That means that that gap at the end of the door will be even. So then and all I have to do is make sure that the gaps on either side are even and then the one on top is also even. Now that I'm happy with how the door is fitting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the hinges and then connect the door to the hinges. So let's give that a go. I'm happy with how all the doors are fitting and what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to remove all the doors and on the back of them, I'm gonna put exactly where each one is coming from so I know that that's the door going back that corresponds to the exact cupboard. Another thing I had to do was I had to move these lights in the back. So I had one on this side and I also had one on this side. I made a mistake and I actually forgot about the two overhead cupboards in the back. Where I had placed the lights originally was actually inside the cupboard. So it was no good having a light inside the cupboard. So, so I moved the light just outside the cupboard and that's gonna be its new position just above the bed. Also, if you see here, I had to move the Bluetooth speaker. So I had to remove the Bluetooth speaker because I forgot again about the cupboard. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two cables that are still here and I'm, I'm hoping that I can pull this wire, this cable down and then at the bottom of the actual cupboard here, which is just above the bed, I can place the Bluetooth speaker into the bottom of the cupboard. At least I'm still able to have the Bluetooth speaker over the bed. That's what I've got to do next. So let's get cracking on that and see how we get on. attaching these magnets to the back of the door but because the door is only seven mil I've had to cut another strip of seven mil because the screw is too long and if I didn't use this the screw will go through the door so I'm gonna secure it to this little strip here then I'll secure this to the back of the door and that means that the screw won't go through the front of the door 
the two hinges secured to the top and to the door. I've got the two magnets on either side and they're, they're very strong. So this door isn't gonna fly open when you turn around the corner and it's gonna stay closed because it needs quite a lot of pressure to open it. So I'm happy with that, happy with these two.